recapping a cocoa bomb from the start of the show this morning. You are hearing as the Bruins begin training camp that the Bruins and Jeremy Swayman have reached an agreement. Yes. Is that, is that correct? Yes. I was whispered to last night that yesterday there was um, a, an agreement that was uh, – they agreed to terms and that that was going to be coming out quite soon. Okay. Just All a right. reminder, on this show, we deliver cocoa bombs. Okay. And uh, I feel like a good tagline would be tune in. We should do this at all times. Tune into the Greg Hill Show for Coco Coco's Bombs. Uh, all right, uh, just one time. So just one. Just one. Oh, just it's singular. Is that what it is? Okay, it is. It is. At singular. the time, it was. It's, yes. All right. It is uh, Patriots Friday of sorts on a Wednesday because of the game tomorrow night. And joining us right now is Patriots linebacker Jelani Tavai. Brought to you by Shaw's and Star Market, perfecting the art of fresh. And by findmassmoney.gov, right on time this morning. Hey, Jelani. How y'all doing? What's, go- <laughs> what's going on? Nothing much. Just uh, getting ready for this uh, Thursday night. So trying to pack up before we uh, hit the road. Yeah, I mean, uh, how, how dif- difficult has it been when it comes to a short week or – uh, you know, you used to this at this point, uh, when it comes to getting ready in a few days. Yeah, you just got to be professional about it. You got to adapt to the situation. And, um, luckily it's, uh, it's not too, uh, straining on the body since we're just trying to recover for the most part from, uh, Sunday. Jelani, one of the things that you guys did well against Seattle was you were able to take their run game uh, away from them. You're going against, but they were able to make plays in the passing game. You're going against the Jets, who can obviously run the football with Brees Hall and Aaron Rodgers. What's your biggest focus? I know this is a team that can pr- that can do both, but is there something that you guys really need to focus on this week to come away with a W? Uh, the biggest thing is just getting Rodgers off track. You know, trying to put him in situations that um, we hope that he's not comfortable in. Um, that's our biggest thing. And then, of course, again, stopping the run, making sure that uh, we don't allow them to uh, get it rolling and get it started uh, on the run game. So those are two of the things that we're trying to, you know, accomplish. Jelani, how difficult is it for you guys, not only a short week, but also losing uh, Jawan Bentley? How big of a loss is that? Uh, losing a guy like Ben is a big thing, you know. Um, one of our captains, our leaders on the team. Um, but like we've been doing before, it's always the next guy up mentality. You know, we have we have bright linebackers that are ready to, you know, take the opportunity and go with it, like Raekwon and and Joe Giles, and and also we got uh, Ellis. So um, I'm excited to see what they, you know, what they can do and. And I'm sure that they're just excited as hell to showcase what they um, what they've been working so hard to you know to, to do. Jelani, this is a kind of a two-part question. You lose Bentley. Was he the green dot guy? And then the second part of the question is you get, said get Aaron Rodgers off schedule. Do you think you need to bring pressure, or is it something getting him off schedule with your front four? The first one. Um, he was one of our green dog guys. Uh, Bentley was uh, definitely one of them. Um, and then the second one, I think it's just a mixture of everything, really. Um, we got we got to apply pressure on him, and then we also got to just show him different looks. You know, get get his um, get different disguises out there because you know he's been in the league for twenty years, so he's seen a lot of football. And so we we got to be on top of everything. You know, whether it's a little detail, uh, I'm sure that he's been watching plenty of film in the last. Two, three days on this to pick up on what um, our tendencies are. So we got to change things up a bit and, um, yeah, definitely get after him. Jelani, it seems like every time we talk uh, with Gerard Mayo, it's it's all about vibes in this locker room and how he has all of you guys seeming to buy in, uh, which is a bit different than seasons we've seen the last couple of years. But if you have the team releasing a guy like Rigor after a weird social media post and, and it seemed like he was unhappy with his position, does that affect a whole team when you have one person in a locker room that seems to be disgruntled, if we can use that word, um, and 
mean, is that something that Gerard Mayo is really trying to, to squash? Um, I, one, I didn't know what happened, actually. Um, I wasn't, I don't really, I didn't really pay attention to the social media stuff, so I didn't, I wasn't uh, aware of what the situation was. And, of course, I just wish uh, Rieger nothing but the best. Um, but I would, I, I could see it that way. You know, you got to nip it in the butt before. Um, it creates a little pocket in our locker room. Um, so I'm sure that's probably what Mayo was doing. But I don't know. You got you got to ask the main man for that. Um, but luckily, uh, in the locker room, there's nothing. Uh, there's no negativity towards anything. We're just we're just trying to get to the next uh, next game, and uh, and it just so happens that our next game is in a short week. So um, yeah, I wasn't aware of that. On that same note, other side of the football, Pop Douglas pretty vocal this week about uh, you know lack of targets. Is that something that you guys? here in the locker room from those guys, and we look at it from the outside, but is that an issue when it comes to that wide receiver core? Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> That's not weird. But if, you, if, you, if, you look at the, if you look at the dynamic in our locker room, I'm so far away from the receivers in the, in the locker room because where my locker is, so I don't, I don't hear the conversations that they're having. But I'm sure that they're just frustrated and they want to perform well, you know, so – it's just a like competitive nature. You know, they wanna they wanna succeed in in whatever they do. So you know, the, the only way they can succeed is you know getting the ball in their hands. So I'm sure that they're 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 planning something this week. So um, yeah, the, <laughs> definitely something I don't uh, no, I'm not aware of because yeah, I'm, well, I'm here uh, to make plays on the defensive side and make tackles. Johnny, you're good at this. Yeah. But we get it. Ger- uh, Gerard should I, I, integrate the locker room a little bit more. <laughs> Rather than put all the linebackers in one spot, he should go like linebacker, wide receiver, D lineman, O line. You know, I'm like I'm in the blend of the <laughs> I'm in the blend of the D lineman and the linebacker. So I'm like in between. <laughs> um, you'll answer this one, I think. Uh, you've been in the league a long time. Um, when it comes to hostile environments. Uh, where do you rank this one tomorrow night, and and what are your what are your top three most hostile o- away environments? Ooh, um, I, I actually never been to a, a Thursday night or a primetime game in New York, so I don't know what the what their vibe or what the energy is going to be like. But I know I know that uh, there's definitely bad beef between the Patriots and the Jets for some reason because I hear it a lot with the with uh with some of our coaches and in, in, in the past. Um, but definitely, I don't know if you guys ever been to uh, Philly or back in the day, Oakland. Those ones were very hostile. Yeah, yeah. Philly's, Philly's the worst. To been to Philly. Don't yeah, forget Buffalo, to, yeah, Jelani. <laughs> yeah, they Oh, broke Buffalo them. too. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But, you know, they're, they're, they're a bit friendly, but they're definitely, yeah, I, I just like their energy. So I don't really see it as a hostile environment. I see it more of as a, uh, energized crowd. My, my favorite Jets Patriots moment, Jelani, was the butt fumble. Where were you when that happened? Ooh, Mark Sanchez. I was probably in middle school or oh, just God. entering high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I feel old. Uh, it's, it's... Well, speaking of feeling old, is it weird to you? You play a guy like Aaron Rodgers. You mm-hmm. probably wa- you watched him play growing up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it was crazy when I. Uh, I was in that division when he was uh, with uh, Green Bay, so I, that was one of my like welcome to the NFL moments when I got to play against him and uh, and Brady, my rookie year. So uh, it's nice to see him in our division because that means it's going to be some fun football uh, to play against. Jelani, one of one of the things we, we talked about the green dot, the new guy. Is there any chance that could be you? Who's the new guy, and and if so. How difficult is it for the guy with the green dot just to kind of like, you know, have the coach in your ear but still have to call the defense and understand what you need to do? Is that because I would think that you're one of the guys that's been on this defense, you know, pretty much longer, te- most tended, tended guy. Who is going to be the new green dot guy with Bentley being down? Um, we haven't been uh, – they, they haven't told us yet, but, I mean, if, if they allow me to do it, then – I'm more than you know excited to do it. Um, I don't. I, I don't know. I think I think that you just build experience through through practicing and uh, through the years. You know, if you've had the green dot, um, 
because it's weird because you're able to hear the call and then you're also able to like you got you got to practice like reading lips sometimes with your teammates to see what they're saying or or yelling at you about. Um, but yeah, it's just I don't think it's that difficult to do. Um, I'm, I don't know. Don't quote me on that one, but <laughs> definitely uh, too late. I wouldn't say it's uh, something as crazy as people think it is. You know, I think I think it's just it's uh, it's definitely something that you just got to get used to. Jelani, uh, one thing that we've unfortunately been accustomed to seeing now is Tua on the field after a brutal concussion. What would you do if you were Tua? at this point of your career after three known concussions and the after effects that we know they cause? Um, I think my first thing would just to uh, have a sit down and talk with my, like all my loved ones and my family to see, you know, I think, I think it's so hard as a football player to just automatically say, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm good. You know, I think a lot of us have been so stuck on this game that it's just, it's so hard for us to make the decisions ourselves that, you know, we need outside, vo- like our, our, the voices of our loved ones that we trust and care for to, you know, have that talk with them and, you know, see what they say. And, and if it does come up that, you know, they say, you know, it's a, the best thing for me to do is to walk away, then, you know, then I, I'd probably um, lean towards that. But if they didn't, then, you know, I'd stay in. But it, it's such a hard question because, it's it's just the game that we've been playing our whole life and it's so hard to just walk away from it. You know, a lot of guys have a big time, like a big struggle trying to walk away from football. And when they do, finally, they still struggle. So I don't know. It's, it's a tough one. Yeah, I'm still struggling. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm wanting one yeah. more play. But it, yeah. I think, Jelani, you're right to the point where you work your ass off to get there and when you finally get an opportunity to get there and be there and stay there which is very difficult to do it's very hard to walk away because Jelani you probably know how many guys I mean even your family members that have tried to get into the NFL and can't and are still trying to get in it's just you know there's thousands of thousands of guys that that every day would kill to be there oh 100 percent and you said it. You said it perfectly because I know. I know. Like I know, plenty of people in my family would kill to be in my situation, and and I do. I do take that into consideration a lot, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I it's a tough one, but like I said, I'm I'm really good, uh, like friends with Tua, and I I just hope the best for him on any decision that he makes because I, I know for sure I couldn't make that decision on my own. So I pray that you know he's okay, and when when uh, when he decides uh, after uh, being on IR, then you know I know that it'll be the right decision. Do you so? In other words, Jelani, not to put words in your mouth, but it really should be taken out of the players' hands in some respect, right? Because what you're saying is the people around you are viewing beyond just football. Um, I would say a little bit, a little bit of it. But I think I think again it's on him to have that conversation with the, like you know um, with the professionals and with his and with his like loved ones, you know, it's his family that's uh, that are going to be the ones that want to see him walk through the door every day. So um, yeah, it's on it's on Tom brother too. Jelani, we will let you get to work on a short week. Good luck tomorrow night. We'll talk to you again next week. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day.